Welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, we're talking about the least cost method for transportation problem. In the previous video, I already talked about the Northwest Corner Rule. And of course, the video before that, I did the same problem we are going to consider that we also considered for Northwest Corner Rule using, um, you know, the standard setup, you know, of uh, having an objective for linear programming, basically. And we saw that using Python and we already got an optimal solution. So we using the Northwest Corner Rule, we didn't get exactly that uh, solution so we got um i think there we go 1960 compared to the 1600 we got for the uh, when we actually used python to solve it so it means that we need to investigate the uh final so the final initial feasible solution uh to check if it is optimal and to improve that using other methods so this is another method just like northwest corner rule let's see how it compares with the northwest corner rule so the the least cost method, the least cost method, um, I mean, you can, you may want to call that LCM, is a technique, is a technique used to find an initial, so just like Northwest Corner Rule, right? All it does is to find an initial feasible solution, initial feasible solution, for it for it for transportation problems right for transportation problems okay so it focuses it focuses on minimizing on minimizing the cost the costs It focuses on minimizing the cost by allocating, by allocating um, as much supply, as much supply as possible to the lowest cost cell, to the lowest cost cell in the cost matrix so here the focus is on the lowest cost in the northwest corner rule right it's more about direction so you start from the very top and you keep moving right or down depending on how you meet supplies and demands but here the focus is on uh this lowest cost right so it focuses on minimizing the cost by allocating as much supply as possible to the lowest cost cell in the cost matrix okay so let's go on to talk about the steps what are the steps of the least cost method okay so of course the first step is to identify you identify the cell with the smallest costs identify the cell with the smallest costs in the cost matrix the cost matrix is simply the table that will you always get identify the cell with the smallest cost in the cost matrix. So, and then after look after identifying that you allocate as much allocate as much as possible as much as possible to this cell to this cell. Of course, up so you are, allocate up to the supply or demand limits up to the supply or demand limits okay so i mean it makes sense right you want to you want to buy as many things as possible at the cheapest cost that's the idea then the second thing you want to do is to adjust adjust the supply and demand adjust the supply and demand as you keep allocating you keep adjusting adjust your supply the supply and demand so in that case now we subtract, subtract the allocated amount, subtract the allocated amount from, from the respective supply and demand. Okay, so if the supply becomes zero, if the supply becomes zero cross out 
cross out the row. So that was the kind of thing we we're doing for northwest corner row two. So if the supply becomes zero, cross out the row. Then if the demand, if the demand, if the demand becomes zero, cross out the column. Okay, then in step three, you just repeat, repeat this process, repeat this process for the remaining cells, for the remaining cells until all supply, until all supply and demand are satisfied. Okay, and let step four is to compute the total cost. Compute the total cost. So, and to do this is simply just multiply, multiply the allocated, multiply the allocated quantities by their respective costs. By their respective costs and sum them up. So this last step is also true for um it's also true for the for the northwest corner rule, right? So these are the steps. Identify the cell with the least costs. With the cell, identify the cell with the smallest cost in the cost matrix, then adjust the supply and demand. Then next, repeat this process, compute the total cost, and that's how you go. So let's let's do what let's do the next step. Let's take an example. Same example. So I'm using I'm solving the same example so we can compare how the methods apply, how the methods uh we can compare the performance of the methods. I think that's what I meant to say, to say rather. So S1, S2, S3, and then we have C1, consumer one, C2, consumer two, and C3, consumer three. Then of course, um, we have So now we have the the costs. We have the costs that is eight six ten. Same thing eight six ten nine seven four. All right, and we have three four two. This is the original thing, and then now we can talk about the demand. Same demand, demand that's eighty one forty one fifty, and the supply, the supply which are balanced. That's 100, 150, 120. So that's the table we have. So we want to use the least cost method for this. So, um, okay. What is the objective again? Our goal, as usual, our goal, our goal, goal, obtain the least transport cost as much as possible. Now I'm putting as much as possible because there's no guarantee that the cost we end up getting will be the least. So that may, it may require some optimization, okay? So that's the example we have. So three suppliers, three, three consumers, and then we have all these quantities that require supply and demand. Okay, so now let's, Let's solve it using the least corner rule. Um, so let's talk about the solution. So I'm just simply going to draw the table again. So we have S1, S2, S3, K, and we have C1, C2, C3, K. Um, then we have demand. And supply here. OK. 
Okay. Um, so the demand, you have 80, 140, 150. The supply is 100, 150, 120. And the costs, 8, 6, 10, 9, 7, 4, and 3, 4, 2. So now using the list corner, list uh, cost method, uh, right? So the first thing we want to do is check, check everywhere. By the way, pay attention to the fact that uh, the supply, so the focus is on, the focus is on this, the suppliers and consumers. So, uh, but this, we need the supply values. That's why that is by the side. Okay. Um, so the first thing we want to do, right, is to check for the least cost, the very least cost here. So if you check around, you discover that the least cost is actually these two. Okay. The least cost anywhere is these two. That's from supplier three to consumer three. And consumer three needs 150. Supplier two can supply supplier three can supply only 120. So in that case, now you assign the 120, and then this is this supply is fulfilled, and then this is crossed out. This one has 30 left to allocate. Okay. So don't forget the step. Identify the cell with the smallest cost. Allocate as much as possible to this cell up to the supply or demand limit. Next is adjust the supply and demand. Subtract the allocated amount from the respective supply and demand. So I've subtracted the 120. That's why I got this 30. If the supply becomes zero, cross out. So the supply is zero. So we've crossed, so we can cross out uh, uh, supplier three automatically. Then we repeat the process for the remaining cells until all supply and demand are satisfied. So the next list cost after two. Now what what happens if the list costs are the same? So you just choose uh, uh, you just choose based on your discretion if the costs are the same. So the next list cost is simply three, okay. So this is uh this is first allocation. The second allocation now is this next list cost. Now supplier three, um, so supplier three. In fact, I think the issue is supplier three is done right. Supplier three cannot supply to this and this because it doesn't have anything to supply again. Okay. So in that case, we move to the next place. The next list cost now is this four. Okay. I mean, this four dollars. So, so, so it means our second assignment is going to go there. Now, post, co consumer three only needs 30 to balance up. Okay. It only needs 30 to balance up. And supplier two has 150. So what we can do then is to say, um, okay, we assign the whole, this 30 now, we assign this 30 to this cell and this is done. And then this guy, this supplier supplied 30, so it has 120 left, okay? So now that 120, so supplier two has to supply still. So that 120, we look for the next list, the next uh, cell, in that that supplier two can supply to supplier two can only supply to, can supply to either of uh consumer one or consumer two but this the least the smaller cost of the two is definitely seven right so it means that se uh, so the and seven so to consumer two needs 120 and supplies supplier two still needs uh, so consumer two rather right, needs 140 but supplier two has 120 left so it means that uh to this seven now we can supply the whole 120 so the whole 120 comes here and then this is done so this one cannot be met again and then this one 120 is gone so it has just 20 left okay so the next thing we want to do, we also check, we now check again for the next list cost that can be met, okay? The next list cost that can be met. And that is that should be six, you know, this C2. So if you look at this six now, um, okay? Six requires 20 to balance up, but then supply one can supply 100. So, uh, okay, this is the third allocation, right? Allocation three. So the fourth allocation will just be here now. And then it takes all the 20 left, okay? And then this is canceled out. So 20 is gone here. So we have 80 left, okay? 80 is left. And then supplier one can still supply to either uh, 
consumer one or consumer three. But depending on the cost, the cost is simply eight. Okay, the cost is eight. And since the cost is eight, which is less than 10, it means that and consumer wants needs 80. So uh, so we can supply the so the fifth allocation is going to be this 80. So the consumer is satisfied, the supplier is also satisfied. So at the end of the day, we have that table. So that I mean that's how the least cost method goes. So now we can have our new table. So we have this new table now. So we have S1, S2, S3. So it can be, we can have a compact table, C1, C2, C3. So all demands and supply have been met. Okay. So now we just have, so I'll put the costs first. 8, 6, 10, as usual, 8, 6, 10, 9, 7, 4. So 9, 7, 4. And lastly, 3, 4, 2. Three, four, two. But now talking about the allocations. So for eight, it ended up getting 80 products. Six got 20 products. Seven costs got 120 products. Then uh, who else? Seven got 120. Four got 30. And two got uh, 120. I mean, by some weird, for some weird reason, this is exactly what the Northwest Corner Rule gave us. It doesn't always have to be like this, but this is, as I, I want to believe this is what exactly the Northwest Corner Rule gave us. So this is the final solution now. I mean, this is the, sorry, the initial feasible solution. So um, we can now say from the, from the initial feasible solution table, from the initial feasible solution, table okay we have we have to ship we have to ship um 80 products 80 products from from supplier one to consumer one right so 80 products from supplier one to consumer one. Then we ship 20 products, 20 products from supplier one to consumer two, right? Then we ship 120 products from two to two. 120 products from supplier two to consumer two. Then we ship 30 products from two to three, the 30 products from, from supplier, 30 products from supplier two to consumer three, supplier two to consumer three, and then we ship uh, 120 products from three to three. So 120 products from, from supplier three to consumer three. Then pay attention to the costs what does it cost in each case? So supplier one to consumer one is $8. Supplier one to consumer two is $6. I think exactly the same for Northwest Corner. Um, it doesn't always have to be like this, mind you. So, but, but this is, if you follow the rules, this is just what we got. $7 and this is $4, right? Is that $4? Yeah. And then finally $2. So we can now say... Uh, This gives this gives a total transportation cost, total transportation cost of it is a total transportation cost of uh, Z equals so you multiply the number of products by the cost, right? So we have eight times eighty plus 6 times 20 plus uh, 7 times 120, 7 times 120 plus uh, 4 times 30, 4 times 30 plus um, 2 times 120, 2 times 120. 
So Z now is 640 plus 120 plus 840 plus 120 plus 240. So Z now is, I think that should be 1,960. 1,960. Uh, let me just be very sure. So that is 640. 640 plus 120 plus 840 plus 120 plus 240. And that is 1,960. So exactly the same result as that of Northwest Corner Row. So by, I mean, this is, I, I believe this is just coincidence, right? So if you check it in another situation, it will not exactly be the same. So we can just say, therefore, therefore, the total transportation costs, total transportation, transportation costs is 1960 dollars okay um the solution the solution okay or uh, should i say should i say this initial feasible solution feasible solution can be checked can be checked for optimality it can be checked for optimality you know and can be optimized and can be optimized using either either the modified distribution modified distribution as Modi method, Modi method, or the stepping stone method. Okay. Now, of course, since we solved this before using Python, and we the answer, the optimal solution we know is one thousand six hundred dollars using the standard um uh libraries for solving linear programming. So we know this solution is not the optimal one. But of course, uh, in case we did not know that, that's why in the future, I mean, like maybe two or three videos from now, I should treat uh, the modified distribution method as well as the stepping stone method in separate videos, by the way. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that right away. Hit the notification bell so you can only get alerted each time a new video is released. Then comment. Let me know if you want me to teach a topic or to solve a problem. And of course, like and share so that more people can have access to this. So watch out for the next video, which will be on the Vogel's approximation method. Let's see if that uh, gives us a solution as close as possible to the one we got from the standard Python libraries for linear programming. Till I come your way again, keep optimizing. Bye.